Here we go. Here. Dot. We. Dot. Go. People coming on. <clears throat> cool. I'll wait one minute. And, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get it going. We will get it going. Oh, floaty little yellow heart. How is that? And a little, oh, now a little red one. I forgot about the floaty hearts. Um, okay. Wait a couple more seconds. <coughs> Excuse me. Hope y'all are doing all right. Wednesday, is it July 1st? Wow, oh, it's July. It all blurs together, doesn't it? It all blurs together after a while. July, June, May, November, March. You know, little bubble margarita boy just joined us. Julian Pinkston in the hat, his house. I actually know someone on here, that's cool. Okay, howdy. Howdy. 20 seconds and I'll start. I'm counting in my head. Y'all can count with me or you can type it in. 20, 19, 18, 17. Getting crowded, which is cool. Nice to see the comments. David.Bridgman, yes, I'm in. I'm glad you're here. Project Black Period. Glad you're here. As usual, there's a couple of people who I've never met before who uh, want to be a, who want to join the video. Not comfortable with that. I don't want strangers jumping in. You know, it's kind of like you know, hey, you want to. Um, I don't know. You know, know what I had for breakfast or something, or uh, it's uh, too personal. Okay, you can't jump into my video. This little red dot's come up. Okay. So I, I'd say I've been on for a good minute and a half, two minutes. So let's get started, okay? I'm realizing like I'm taking way too long to wind up. Um, okay, so what I would like to do is uh, just briefly mention before I start today, I want to mention that I would love to see y'all jump on my... Uh, Excuse me, there's dust on my screen. <laughs> I kind of like that. Woo! I, I, I very, it takes very little for me to entertain myself, if you can't tell. Um, what I'd like for y'all to do today is jump on my email list. If you click on the um, contact link on howardsherman.com, there is a black button, hit subscribe, put your email address in there and hit the black button, subscribe, get on my email list. I do a lot of special things for people who are on my email list that I don't really tell everyone on Instagram and everywhere else. So uh, sign up for my email list, click the contact button on howardsherman.com and uh, enter your email address and hit subscribe. Uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, I missed a, a question last week about individual critiques on here, but I did make a post about that yesterday or the day before. Not yesterday, but maybe a day or two, two or three days ago, I did mention that uh, if you're interested in finding out about individual uh, critiques, you can send me an email and I'll send you that information. I'll say that again. Send me an email and I'll send you that information if you're interested in uh, individual critiques. Um, <laughs> the ultimate heckler is back on <laughs> another, another one. I know, uh, big bad Bob just joined life is meaningless. Discuss. Okay. I'll leave that up. I'll leave that up for y'all. Uh, I'll leave that up to y'all to, um, I'll leave that up to y'all to, uh, fig talk about the meaning of life. And in his case, life is meaningless. I mean, what's with the pessimism, man? We need to keep fighting forward with optimism. Okay, um, that's all I'm gonna talk about in the beginning today. Sign up for my email list and uh, email me about the individual critiques. Let's jump right in. All right, there are two 
Um, there are two concepts that I want to mention today, both based on things that I've been reading. And um, after I talk about those, then we'll do the questions and answers, which seem to both be incredibly satisfying and aggravating all at the same time. But I guess um, I guess y'all seem to like that kind of duality or polarity, uh, much like me. Um, and I would like to hear, I'd love to hear some um, feedback from y'all about these and let me know what you'd like to hear about or if they're helping you. If they're not helping you, feel free to let me know. You know, send me an email like, hey, I don't like these or hey, I love them or whatever. Um, you know, sometimes I wonder if, if, they're, if they're helping and I'm wasting your time. I'm, I'm doing these to help y'all, you know. That's the main um, the main thing here, okay? All right, um, the first thing I would like to talk to y'all about today is I want you to start thinking about creating a working list of your own artistic values. And this is how you're gonna, this is how you're gonna do that. And forgive me for sort of glancing at my notes a little bit regarding this, but I wrote a few things down, so I'll kind of keep doing that kind of thing. Sorry, a little bit of a connection. Okay, we're having connection issues. Creating a working list of your own artistic values. What I would like you, a lot of times you're gonna hear people say things like painting's dead or a certain kind of music's dead or a certain sort of this or that trend, fashion, whatever. Certain artistic movements are dead. But people say that sort of thing all the time and it's just, it's not true. So you never know when you're, uh, you never know when your tastes are going to prove you wrong regarding what's dead, what's not dead, what's working, what's not working. And so I think in order for you to create a working list of your own artistic values, one of the things that you need to do is start asking yourself questions when you're looking at work that doesn't appeal to you. Um, try and spot the good qualities along with the bad ones. Uh, I do this all the time. I don't always comment about it, but a lot of times I'm on a, um, there's a lot of times where I'm on uh, sort of a corresponding thread with, with two or three other close friends, mostly artists, and we're critiquing images that we're shooting back and forth to each other, or we do, or do it in person, it happens both ways, via email and JPEGs, and also through, um, also through uh, actual looking at work in person, which is highly underrated, but incredibly important. And, um, you know, we'll sit there and pick things apart, but at the same time, when you're looking at these things that you don't like, what are the good qualities about them? What you should do is write it down, write down, make a list of at least two things about something you don't like. And, you know, maybe it's the color, the composition, the structure, space, line, surface, too, too loud, too soft, too many, women, too many men, too many, you don't like the way the sky is done, a anything and everything. List it all. Think about the qualities, the good qualities, at least at two good qualities of the thing that you absolutely hate. And as you, as you make this list, as you're looking at this, all of it's going to define what it means to you. And it's going to help you come up with a list, a working list of your own artistic values. And the other thing regarding this topic, the other thing that's going to change as you uh, do this is your values are going to change because you're going to grow, evolve, and you're going to learn a lot more from doing this sort of thing. And I got to tell you something, I'm guilty of not writing down these lists of the good qualities of things that I don't like um, nearly as much as I should. Um, and I see a lot of work I don't like. In fact, most of the work I see I don't like or I'm critical of in one way or another. And that's happened, that's happened more and more frequently as I've sort of fine-tuned my interests and narrowed my interests as I've evolved through working and looking and looking and working and commenting and thinking and commenting and working and looking and working and working and working and working and working and looking. I need to sit down now. Shit. I hope that that made sense. Did that help? I hope it did. Okay. So the other thing I wanted to talk to you. So 
Sorry about that. Again, uh, connection concern today. I think a lot of people are online. Uh, I mean, you know, everyone's tracking the coronavirus heat heat seeking map and causing the Wi-Fi to slow down. I guess that's what's happening. Okay, so now you know how to create a working list of your own artistic values by things that you're looking at. That, and I think that that's, that's really, really important. The second thing that I wanted to talk to you about today is vulnerability. Some people call it radical vulnerability. Radical vulnerability, you hear that term all the time these days, radical vulnerability. I don't think it's always important to be radically vulnerable. I don't, I don't think people talk enough about getting a little tougher and, um, uh, you know, learning how to, how to stand up and fight a bit. But regarding, regarding your creative process and your artistic process, radical vulnerability is hugely important. You got to be willing to free dive into the deep end. You've got to be willing to fail flamboyantly. And you've got, you know, even if you're going to get crucified for it by the public or take bad criticism or uh, comments behind your back or have people turn away, the only way forward is through being vulnerable. And you've got to consistently believe in what you're doing and stick to your guns. I think that the first thing that I talked about, which is uh, creating your value list, would probably come first and help you figure out how to be radically vulnerable in your work. But you've got to remember, you've got to remember that no matter what, you know, um, stick to your guns once you've figured out what's, what you're interested in. And when I talk about free diving into the deep end, and, and that, goes in concept, that goes along with being, uh, obviously that goes along with being radically vulnerable. But what I'm also referring to is free dive deeply into your interests, no matter how weird, quirky, personal they are, through, through, investigating those things within you, you're going to come up with uh, uh, the basic knowledge that you want to investigate in the work. And then it's a matter of fine tuning and polishing that through just work. So anyway, I'm talking about these things in pretty broad strokes, but I think it's still quite helpful. And, you know, I think these are big, important concepts for people to discuss. Um, and that's kind of it. And here we are already 15 minutes in. So for the next few minutes, I will take uh, questions. Hopefully I won't lose my uh, connection as I move over here. So I know that it takes a minute for the questions to come in. Okay. Questions, comments. Send me some good questions. Talk about radical vulnerability in your work. You can also talk about your artistic values. Ask me questions. We hear? Okay, a little bit off, a little bit off topic. Well, maybe not totally off topic, but an interesting question. David Bridgman wants to know, uh, quote, Ooh, don't know whether you mentioned this in your last video, but how's your sculptural work going? Uh, I have nothing to report there other than, um, I'm not, I'm not a sculptor, but I'm a, I, I'm actually, um, playing around with some things, but I really don't have anything to re in that regard to report, you know? So when I do, you'll know it. Um, but there is incremental progress in terms of my activity in that um, arena. Uh, but there's nothing to show for it yet. But stay tuned. I really don't want to talk about that a lot, to be honest with you, because... Um, I'm not really, I, I, I'm not really impressed by uh, social media. Uh, I'm not really that impressed by 
um, this oversharing notion on social media on, on, on social media or oversharing in general regarding unfinished or unresolved work. I might mention things very briefly. I find it really um, I find pulling back the curtain completely and showing the wizard sometimes to be kind of a dis- disappointing and um, I'm not implying that I'm a wizard. I'm not implying that I'm a wizard, David. I'm just saying that, like, I don't have anything to really talk about regarding uh, sculpture right now. My sculpture. I don't really have any sculpture to talk about. I don't, I'm not, okay. I need to shut up now. Uh, Lots of questions. Great. Um, I've just got, bear with me, y'all. I got to scroll through all of them. It takes me a minute. I'm not great at reading out loud. Oh, there's a few here that aren't going to be useful to y'all. Uh, interesting. Okay. Esra uh, Nespogulari. Oh, right. I know that name. Uh, I think, I be think, I think radical vulnerability is a bit American concept developed against cringe culture. I don't know. You know what? It might be radical vulnerability regarding that might be uh, related to the history of psych- psychology or analysis, which stemmed a lot of that stemmed out of an influx of uh, Freudian types uh, from World War II from Europe. But huh, something interesting to think about. Okay. Juanita.Fryer, how do we become more open? I don't know. How do you become more open, Juanita? You might become more open um, in a different way than the next person than the next person, but I gave you some tactical steps on how to learn more about what you like and don't like in art. So go back and uh, listen to the first part of this broadcast, and maybe you'll become more open through the things that you make, right? What do you think about that, Juanita.Fryer? Uh, Dylan underscore Bardo, do you find that you find things out while you're painting that you didn't have in mind when you start? Hopefully everyone does, or at least when they finish the painting, maybe not in the process of the painting. It's called growth. Change and growth. Uh, I'm skipping over a lot of these here because I just don't really know how to, um, you know, answer them for everyone. Uh, okay, uh, here's something good. Adaset.art. Are there any common themes of things you don't like about a lot of the work that you're seeing these days. Okay, there's a little, that, that didn't make total sense, but I think what you're asking me, are there certain things I'm seeing these days in a lot of art that I don't like? Um, I'll tell you one thing. I, what I, I, what I, I don't like the fact that too much mediocre art under the guise of social politics is being, is being given a lot of attention in the art market. So, meaning the thesis statement around the work ends up being more important with some of the work than the work itself or the identity of the artist. And when things change and the wind blows a different way and there's a different news cycle or et cetera, et cetera, and the only thing you're left with is the work, the work doesn't necessarily hold up, but the agenda of the artist, uh, you know, was the focal point. So I think that that's a real, that's a real big concern. Um, so I don't like the fact that we're, 
there's too many people who are overly focused on um, what the artist looks like or what the agenda is of the artist and not enough about the actual painting. You know, that's kind of a big problem right now. I, th I see it as a problem. Um, but that'll probably shake itself out in the long run. Because uh, in the end, you only end up, in the end, when things change and years from now or whatever, you're only, it's going to still start and end with the work. It's always going to be about the work in the end. It's going to start and end with the work. Hi from Armenia, okay. Look who's on here, Jenny Lee Snyder. I know Jenny, hello Jenny. Okay, this is tricky, but interesting. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to answer this. Jenny Lee Snyder, this is a bit off topic. In your wild and wonderful pieces, how do you denote context? Uh, context being defined as the environment in which a work is understood. Okay, so I'm not sure if I'm going to answer this correctly or answer this the right way or whatever, but I'm going to say this. Uh, regarding context, the artist doesn't have a lot of control over the context all the time, right? You can consider context while you're making things. You can consider context even before you make things when you're planning things, if you're that kind of an artist, right? But, um, you know, once, once you've made it and it goes out there into the world, into a white cube or onto your website or wherever, there's going to be a context that's beyond your control, which I guess would be part of the environment that you're not going to have any control over. And last week or the week before, I, I don't remember if it was last week or the week before, but I talked about something similar to this when I was talking about a viewer at an art opening, or maybe it was in my studio, someone came and corrected me about the meaning of my own work, which they really had no business correcting me, but they brought such a different interpretation of the work that I found really interesting that I kind of just went with it, right? So there is a difference in context there, but, um, you know, what you're alluding to can actually turn into a, a much bigger conversation. And right now in the, in the news cycle and the current events, context is context around statues is being discussed. Right. Um, which is kind of a whole nother matter, but, um, I think it's inescapable. Context is inescapable and unavoidable. I also think context is one of those big, broad words that needs to be unpacked in, in a whole bunch of different ways. And in the end, you can only control uh, context so much because what is context? Context is um, context is kind of what um, context takes consideration with indiv what individuals outside of yourself say and think. And I really don't know if I answered that, Jenny Lee Snyder. Let me know if any of that, send me a comment right here real quick. And let me know if anything I just said sort of made sense regarding that. In the end, you sh I wouldn't be overly concerned about, if you're an artist making artwork in the end, I wouldn't be overly concerned about context. I'd be more concerned about making something that's resolved and convincing of its intent. Yeah, I like the, what I just said there. Okay, let me know if, send, send a comment, let me know if anything made sense. Really big idea, good juicy idea there. I appreciate the, I appreciate that even though it was a little challenging to talk about it on here. I like that kind of stuff. I'm, like I've mentioned before, I like having to think on my feet on here. Okay. Sure, I go see Illustrator. I love your work. Thank you. What is your best place to create? Shira Gostini underscore Illustrator. Best place to create is in my studio. That was easy. Um, Jenny Lee Snyder, a follow up and context within a painting itself. Don't really know what you mean by that context within the painting itself. 
Uh, I'm not really, I'm not really sure. Um, I'm not really sure how to, how to talk about con, how to context. The, oh, I mean, the first thought I have when you say that, my first thought is taking into consideration the culture, environment, and art history that you're that you're living in, right? I don't know. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's see if we get one or two more really good questions before we call it a day. Um, I do think, if anything, it would be important for y'all to revisit what I talked about regarding. Um, both radical vulnerability, but even before that, the uh, how do you come up with your own list of things that you're interested in by looking at things that you like and don't like, right? And making the list. So revisit that part of the video if you didn't, if you jumped on here late. Uh, here's kind of some, here's something kind of interesting from Candor Chavez. Uh, do you think your work is like is like a, a graffiti a little? Do you think your work is like graffiti, where you create and destroy at the same time? Uh, Candor, Chavez, I don't really have a lot to do with graffiti or graffiti writer, writers, although critically, uh, I, at one time or another, I've been lumped in with them a little bit. I, maybe it's because they see a black line or so, sorts, but um, I'm not really coming out of that tradition at all. Um, when you talk about graffiti cre being created and destroyed, I'm assuming you're referring to the fact that it's constantly ephemeral because it's being painted over. Um, and what the, the walls are whitewashed or painted over again and again because it's done illegally, right? I guess that's what you, I guess it's what you mean. Um, I'm assuming that's what you mean. If that's the case, I'm actually making everything, I'm making artwork that's built to Built to last, to live forever. Um, so I like the fact that you talked about gra graffiti in an ephemeral, conceptual way for a change. At least I think you did, Candor Chavez, because that's not necessarily the way people normally talk about it. I've never really, I'll be quite honest. I mean, even though I know a lot of, I've got a lot of followers that are into that and I've been lumped in with those guys a little bit, at different times, I really have no, and I know I know a couple of graffiti writers personally that are I'm friendly with, and they're cool, and I've gone to those openings and things. But uh, I really don't have um, an interest in that, nor have I ever really looked at that for any kind of inspiration or source material or uh, reference material of any sorts. I think it's a very, um, uh, very. Um, if you're seeing a lot of that in my work, then you're really not seeing, it's just, it's a very shallow read. It's kind of like, if you see some, if you think you're seeing some sort of crude figurative element in my work, I think that that's a shallow read. My work's a lot more invested in uh, formalism and art history and things like that. Okay, there's a few other, you know, I'm getting a lot of questions. I'm, I'm flattered. I'm getting a lot of questions about me and my work and my personal stuff. And I, I, I and I really, I'm very flattered by that. And thank you for those questions, but they're not, I'm skipping some of them because I don't think they're really, I kind of wanted to talk more about the, uh, you know, the process of uh, finding out what you like and, radical vulnerability. I'm scrolling back through for some other questions. Oh, okay. I'm not getting any up there. Okay. A lot of broken English that's hard to decipher. All right. One more question and then we will call it a day. One more good question. No more, no more, no more. What's your inspiration? How do you know when it's finished? I can't do it anymore. I'm going to fucking blow my head off if you keep asking me these back, those quite those two questions. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Nicholas Dotley. Okay. At what age did you start making art? 
what inspired you. Uh, I've been sort of making art my whole life, I guess. I've been drawing since before I can talk, according to my mom. Um, and I really don't... I like the Chuck Close... I can't believe I'm answering this again. Jeez. Okay, the Chuck Close quote is the best. Inspiration is for amateurs. Uh, I gotta get I gotta get work done. Okay, Nicholas Lee, get work done. Don't worry about being inspired. Okay, I think that's it for today. Email me if you need. Email me if you want to um, talk about personal critiques and um, make sure you get on my email list. Click on contact and. Uh, Click on contact and enter your email address and hit the black subscribe button. Okay, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Okay, bye-bye.